Hello guys, Sapphire Yagami. I'm here with a review for The Big Bang Theory. Episode 5 of Season 9 is titled The Perspiration Implementation. So in this episode, we start off with Howard working in his lab and the other guys come in and ask if he's ready for lunch. He tells them that he's working on something first. Sheldon asks him if he's working on the prototype drive system for the High g rover. Instead, Howard has built a gadget that adds mileage to his Fitbit and makes it appear that he has been jogging since Bernard didn't want him to exercise more. So, they get into the situation of, like, maybe they should, you know, try to be more active. So they decide to take a fencing class. I mean, they attend this fencing club, which is um, run by um, B Barry Kripke. Sheldon sees a certain elegance, a certain elegant appeal to sword fighting. It's indoors, no running, no throwing, no catching, and no gym shorts that get pulled down or up. Meanwhile, the girls are invited to the comic book store by Stuart. More women are now interested in comic books. Well, most likely we've always been interested in comic books, but anyway. <clears throat> and he wanted to get more women to the store. He's been stocking more female-oriented oriented titles. He added a triangle to the end of the toilet paper roll and, and also added a nursing mother's area where they're sitting for extra security. He has an overhead camera to keep an eye on them for their protection to keep pervs away, even though technically you just made yourself sound like the perv due to the fact that you have a camera to watch them. Amy thinks that he should change some of his artwork like the woman in a dog collar on the leash that she had pointed to. Well, when you think about majority of comics and stuff, a lot of it is is geared toward, you know, males, which is why the females are drawn that way. I mean, look at Tomb Raider in her earlier days, in her earlier, you know, conception or like the earlier games. She has big ass boobs and she has shorts on. Realistically, a woman, if she was doing the actual job, would actually not go anywhere especially if she has to go through like tubes and everything she, tombs and get all these she will not dress like that uh what's another character um she's in this fighting game and she has like this red barrette on and it's like a one-piece bathing suit type thing but it's like a thong up her ass and she has on gloves realistically she's supposed to be like this military trained woman i'm pretty sure women in the military don't actually dress like that and then let's not get started on Mortal Kombat and every other game that you can think of or comic book or whatever or fantasy games. Women are usually drawn in proportionate because we're market they're marketing toward men. They're trying to get men to watch it. I mean seriously, I remember the last time I've seen a Mortal Kombat game is the one before the new one that came out, Mortal Kombat X is the previous one. And Jade's move one of, when she, you know, finishes her opponent, she st sticks her staff into the ground, slides down it like a stripper pole, and poses. I'm like, what was the point of doing that? For men? Cool. For men. But you can see with, um, slowly over time, you know, we have more women, you know, Showing their straight interest into, you know, comics and everything. Because some of us already, you know, you already had women within, you know, in this, in various fandoms of, you know, Star Trek and, um, Star Wars and Harry Potter and Doctor Who and Game of Thrones. You already have women in, that are into comics and the Avengers and DC Comics and, you know, everything. We already have women that's already into it. But it's the fact that, you know... Uh, I guess you say nerdum and geekdom is this now becoming is more mainstream than it was before. You know, the stereotype of nerds was like you know, like you know the Big Bang thing, the Big Bang Theory characters. You know, they're like Sheldon. They're very smart and everything, but you know they're very antisocial. Or they still live with their mom. Same thing with the girls. They're supposed to. Be, they're always usually more portrayed as um, Amy from the Big Bang Theory. You know, they don't know how to dress. You know, glasses and. It don't have fixed hair, you know, it's that stereotype. So now the new stereotype is the sexy, the sexed up version. So the female's like, oh, look at me. I play video games. Oh, look at this Xbox. Oh, I love the video games. Oh, look at me. I'm pretty. Yeah. So in a university gym, the guys are flexing their rap ears, and Raj feels like pussy boots while Leonard always wanted to be a swashbuckler. Kripke joins them and welcomes welcomes them to the fencing club, but explains that fencing is a serious sport and not Star Wars. Howard and Raj identify more with Game of Thrones and The Princess Bride. <coughs> so first they practice the on, the on guard using a dominant leg. And then, um... 
they you know they practice a little bit steps and then when crypto gets a phone call these guys that are doing these with these, with their frisbee tours then when he gets off the phone they're back in the position i'm like really 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 so back to Amy and Stuart. Amy suggests that he advertises directly to females, and Stuart then wants to put up sign up in one of uh, up in his window that says, "Women come in, don't be afraid." So Penny then checks the reviews of the store online, and everything about him is pretty much negative, and it just puts off Stuart as this really creepy person. But he does need to work on that. Back to their lesson. Their lesson is going good. We have. Raj and Howard up here doing lines from freaking movies, mostly uh, like from Scarface. <laughs> you know. And um, Sheldon reveals to Kripke that, you know, him and Amy broke up. And then Kripke's like, ooh, interesting. And then um, Sheldon's like, why is that interesting? And then Leonard tells Sheldon that obviously he's interested in Amy and since you guys are not broken up, he's, he's just pretty much he's going to try to make his move. And Sheldon doesn't like that. So he challenges Kirky to a duel, which he's which uh he challenges I think he said five years. Oh Sheldon. So finally, um Stuart admits that the problem is himself and that he gets nervous around women and they um and and he confesses that at this point of his life he thought he would be married or in a relationship or have a pet that didn't want to kill himself, which I'm like, okay. And so then we go back to the and we we'll go back to the males and we realize that um we have Sheldon in a uh you know, the bar with guys and they like they suggest to him that the best way to get over a breakup is by asking some girl, you know, asking somebody else, you know, moving on. So Sheldon goes up to this table, asks all these women Two of them was related. One was the grandmother. One was the granddaughter. And the other one he didn't even ask her out because he said he red hair and pale skin remind him of clowns, and he don't like clowns. So then we end up with the show ending with um, Bernadette, Amy, and Penny. Um, Amy gets a text from Kirky stating that you know he's asking her out, and then he also ends up sending her, uh, I'm guessing, a dick pic or something. And she shows it to Penny and Bernadette, and he's like, oh my god, no. And then we have Amy and Sheldon meeting each other in the hallway, to which Bernadette Leonard leaves to let him allow them to talk. So he, you know, they kind of talk for a minute, and you can tell it's kind of awkward because, you know, they're still in that phase. But I have a feeling, this, this, you know, let this ride out. They're going to get back together. Like, I mean, Sheldon and Amy, they're going to get back together. Like, that's what I'm hoping happens in the show, which it better. <laughs> oh, I will write a very serious tweet or something. But anyway, that is pretty much all for the Big Bang Theory. So comment, rate, subscribe. I will see you guys next time. And